What's up guys, I'm Sean the Bro here again for another programming tutorial for you all. You guys have been loving these, so I figured let's keep at it. So this time we're going to be looking at health and damage primarily. There's also a stamina bar I added, but we're not really going to use that this time other outside of basic functionality, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. But here's how to have some functioning bars in your game. So if you want to use them for health, mana, stamina, whatever it could be, you'll see them in the top left corner. Now this is the basic game that we already had going from the first two episodes. And now, on a key press, I can drain health uh, more quickly or a little bit slower and heal health. Now normally you wouldn't want to just manually do this, you'd want to have it when you get shot, when you get into you know some sort of accident, or uh, you punch an enemy, you want their life to go down, something like that. Uh, so we will be focusing on that in the next episode, but this episode is de dedicated to basically all the functionality that is going to get us to this state where we can control the amount of life a player has, the amount of damage that they take, things like that. It, it will actually allow us to use uh, health and mana or stamina for AI as well. So if you're looking for health bars over your enemies or things like that, then this is the tutorial for you. So let's get started. This one will probably be pretty quick because I want to go a lot more in depth in the next episode with, again, putting the health bars over certain people, like over enemies, over your own character, uh, something like that. And I also want to kind of have a reason that you're taking damage as opposed to just c controlling the health. So say you take damage because you run into spikes, but then we go collide with a collectible and we gain health back. We get like a health pickup. So to start this off, uh, I, I'll show you what I did, but this is going to be pretty similar to the sprint functionality that we did. So if you go to editor preferences, you're going to want to, if you want to do the debug heal and debug damage that I've done for this, you're going to want to follow this and go into uh, editor preferences, scroll down to, uh, give me a second, I forget exactly what it's called. Was getting scratched by my cat there. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, you're gonna go. You can go to edit, project settings, not editor preferences. Here we go. Then you're going to go to engine, input. So I have heal and damage at H and J. Heal for H because you know I would remember that. And J is just damage because it's right next to heal. Simple enough. But I added them as action mappings, that way I can set them their controls up in code. So switching to Visual Studio now, you'll see I've added the action mappings like we did with Sprint, so I'm not going to go over that too much. But basically, you just copy this format. There's already a few in here when you use the template, so you don't have to worry about messing it up. Just copy them and change the values that don't make sense anymore. Like if you copy jump, make sure you use start healing and start damage or whatever you call your functions. And obviously don't leave these labeled as jump. Name these whatever you're trying to do based on the action mapping. In the header file for those, all you need to do are make your basic functions. In this case, start healing, start damage from my functions. And I did a few other, a few additional things. So I made start healing uh, and heal, start damage, and take damage actually different functions in this case. Here's the reason why. So we don't want the heal and damage to be done on a button press for the final game. Like obviously you're going to be shooting people or you're going to be punching people or you know bad guys are going to be shooting at you. However it's got to go, however your game's expected to turn out, um, you are going to want these healing and damage mechanics in the game. So a good way to test functionality is to have functions dedicated that are basically cheat codes or hotkeys that you can use while debugging the game to kind of test that functionality. So start healing and start damage are the functions that I am using to call the, uh, the heal and take damage functions with the amount. 
This gives me easy access to tweak them without changing the end game functionality. And then if I don't want those H and J keys to be able to heal or damage an enemy or a player character at the end game, I can just disable the functions, I can comment them out, or I can even delete them from the entire project if I don't think I'm going to use them again. This is also very ugly because I did take damage. Okay, the, the ignore me is ugly uh, because I like consistency and I wasn't being consistent, but yeah. So you don't have to make four functions, you can make two. I decided to make four for debugging purposes and I'd suggest that you do this if this is your first time programming or your first time making a game. It would be a good idea to kind of get into the habit of that debugging process. Lastly, in the header file, um, I made a player health variable and you'll notice something different about it. So I made the variable float player health. Now you'll know we already made the is sprinting variable last time and some other variables in other uh, coding tutorials, but you'll notice this time there's something different, this U property line. What this U property line does is it defines things for the Unreal Engine so that you can use them in Blueprint or in the editor itself, depending on the different flags you put in here, uh, the different parameters you put in here, I should say. So uh, I have U property edit anywhere which I'm not, I'm never too positive about the specifics, but any edit anywhere will allow you to see it and modify it in Blueprint. Um, and then Blueprint Read Write kind of does the same thing. To, to my knowledge, the difference is that edit anywhere is kind of more about, oh, I can touch it in this file, or I can touch it in these blueprints, I can touch it in blueprints that aren't the parent of this class, or um, I can touch in blueprints that aren't the child of this class, but blueprint read write basically is the one that gives you access in the corresponding class. If you're not familiar with classes or blueprints, ignore that. It's a very specific thing and you can always include both of these, it won't hurt anything. I do know some people, especially in more professional environments, want you to use the you know, very specific case that you have. Even me being someone who programs and does this stuff for a living, honestly, I don't really care. Having both those flags is okay for me, for personal projects at least, because I'm going to be the only one touching this. So as long as I know that this is going to be used in some manner for this kind of functionality, I'm okay with that. So to make it easy on yourself, feel free to do this. Um, if you're more skilled at programming watching this, I'm sorry if that practice hurts you. For real, um, and you can feel free to point out the difference to me. I, I could have gotten them wrong or been a little bit backward. I know that's the basic functionality. I won't take offense if you want to correct me. Um, I'm not claiming to be an expert on that. I just know that that's the easiest way to do that. Uh, and that now that that's done, the last part here, category equals health. Uh, you don't have to do the category part at all in this U property. The category thing actually that this equals and then the name you want. The name is actually how it's gonna show up in Blueprint. So I'm not getting to the Blueprint just yet, but I do wanna show you what I mean by that. Uh, so. so if you see, um, I have the, the name in here, player health, this is the name of the variable. And then I have the player health variable, Gears of War template character. Now, if I change this category, I can actually change the text that it shows up under. So if I didn't want it to be health, I could be it could be like uh, character basics or something, and it would show up under the character basics side of things. Not too important for now, but just showing you why I did that. So that's all. Basically, to wrap to wrap up everything I just said, you're going to want a variable player health and make it it visible in Blueprint, um, and make sure you can edit it. Okay. And then make sure you have your functions. I have start healing and start damage and they're bound to an action or a key. And lastly, we just have to make our functions and then we'll go into the blueprint and finish this up. I told you it's gonna be a pretty quick episode. So start damage and start healing are my debugging functions, remember that. So I have them here simply to test out values and things like that. So you can skip start damage and start healing if you want. You don't have to do those. I decided to do that. What's important here are the take damage and heal functions. So let me describe what they do. 
Let's start with take damage because you're going to start with full health. So it makes sense that take damage would run first. So I started off with a log. Uh, logs are also just meant for debugging purposes. We did speak about this a little bit last time. So I decided to continue using them. Uh, this time I was using them with a variable to show you how that works. So last time we had used a log in the sprinting function that said we are sprinting. We have stopped sprinting. So it did give us an indication of when things were happening in the code, but it didn't give us any values. Sometimes you want to know what a value is. So say you have a crash um, and your, your code, your player is dying and you have a crash. Sometimes you want to find out if a variable is a good value or not. So you might want to print this log out and then print out a variable's value afterward. You'll see what this looks like in a second, but if you want to print out a value of a variable, <laughs> hard, hard to say than I thought, a value to a variable when you use a UE log, or in pretty much all cases with printing strings, not all of them, but pretty much all of them, you are going to put a percent and then the variable type. Now, there's actually a lot of these, um, and it's going to be way too confusing if you try and figure that all out right now. So I'm not going to go into that. But when you see this percent %f, this stands for float. So it means I will be printing out a float variable value once this log in this position in the log. So this would read as we are taking damage for, and if damage amount was five, five points. So that's the log. You'll see that the heal amount does the exact same thing, but we are healing for five points. Uh, here's the important stuff and again you can skip the log you don't have to do that these things are all good practices especially when you're just starting out when you get programming you'll kind of figure out what you do want and what you don't need but it's good to see just so you can test it out and figure out how to work with logs a little bit more so the important things of take damage are actually pretty simple so this player health value I've defined to be 1 1.00f up top in my constructor. If you're using the coding template like I am and like we were uh, episodes one and two, if you go to the top of the class line 15, you will have your constructor. Um, I won't get into what all that is right now. Again, it's a little bit much. I'm just trying to help you coast through and we'll learn it together as we go. But this function right here, it's not gonna have anything in the parentheses. It's gonna have a bunch of text here in the middle. If you scroll to the bottom, and this is where I put is sprinting, uh, I put player health equals one. Now there's a reason I made it one instead of 100, but you can make it any value you want. So if you want to follow my guide exactly, just make it 1.0f. F stands for float. You do have to uh, put F at the end of a float value. There are ways to cast it and convert it and it's not hard, but just for the sake of things and for the good practice, put 1.0f. So that defines our player value, or, or excuse me, our player health value. And basically all we do is we subtract the damage that we take from that value. So if we have 1.0f and we lose 0.02f, then we're at 0.98f or 98% health remaining. And that healing is literally the same exact thing except we're adding the health, the healing amount to the player health. Lastly, in these functions, I just have a safety check here. Uh, if player health is less than zero, player health equals zero. Basically, don't let your health go less than zero um, because then if you, if you want functionality where, oh, you're at zero health, something happens, and you don't want to necessarily keep doing that if you're losing health or if you have something where it's showing your health, like if you have a, oh, I have 100 health. Well, you don't want that value to go below zero because then it'll say you have like negative 30 health and that'll look ugly. Same with healing, although sometimes with healing, I know you can get some health uh, overcharges or shields where you can have like 200 health. So if that's the case, then you don't have to have these lines in if you have a reason for it. But for the intentions of this video, I figured less than zero health and greater than 100 health is not necessary which is why I did this. And that's all the code you're gonna to have to do for this episode. And lastly, we're going to step into Blueprint. So I've already made the Blueprint file, but I do wanna show you how to make it. So if you go, here's your home screen. 
you hit add new. Um, you can technically do it through a blueprint class, but I would not suggest that. Being the first time around, I would suggest uh, user interface, I believe it is, widget blueprint. These are your HUDs and menus and things like that that you're going to be using. So these are good for interacting with the player in some way. Not really interacting with the game as much, but telling the user what's going on. So you're just going to hit widget blueprint and you're going to have a screen like this. Obviously you won't have the red and blue bars. Those are things that I made. But to make those, all you have to do, um, I made them a progress bar because Unreal has a nice progress bar built in. It's right here. It's in the very top section. It's the uh, sixth one down. They have a very nice progress bar built in. It's pretty simple, but it'll do more than what we need. So you can just drag them in. I'll drag this one in as an example. And then you can right click it and rename it to be whatever you want, but you don't have to since you're just getting started. I called mine health and stamina bar so I knew what they were. And then if you want to change their color, make sure you've clicked on it. Make sure it's highlighted. And then you can scroll down and do, you'll see fill color and opacity is this color. And now you can change this all you want and you'll be like, well, why isn't this changing? But uh, if I could find the example that I wanted, I don't know where that went. I had this all set up so that this would look nice. But it deleted my template on me. So that's OK. All right. So <laughs> that's OK. Um, it ignored that. But anyway, um, if you want to make the, this a certain color, uh, the, pro the percent starts at 0, which is the reason you're not seeing the color. It goes 0 to 1%. So if you want to change the color, you just set the color in here. Let's make this one gold. And then you can change this percent and see what it looks like all the way through. Um, and then here. So if you go to the graph, you'll realize we don't have anything inside of it yet, uh, which is actually good. And we, we won't really need it for any of this. We will need it, but not through this. Instead, go back to the designer. You can click on the health bar. And I'll do it on the stamina since I've already done it on the health so you can see it. If you go down to where you were just changing the percent, you can go to bind and create binding. Now I've already done that, which is what this get health bar percent zero is. Uh, so if you go to that, if you create that new binding, you'll have just this node, get health bar percent zero, and this node, return node. And basically what you want to do is combine the functionality that you want or label the functionality that you want in game to appear on the screen. And what I mean by that is we want the health bar to go from one, uh, one to zero or 100% to 0% while taking damage and vice versa. While they're healing, you want it to go up from 0% to 1% or 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. So all you have to do uh, and this isn't the best way to do this, but it's more than good enough for uh, the first time you're doing it and also for games where you're not dealing with multiple players. So all you have to do is if you right click anywhere here in the space, you'll get this uh, little message box that pops up that says all possible actions. And there's a ton of things in here. Don't bother looking for this. It'll be very difficult to find what you want specifically unless you're out of options. Just type this in. You can do get player character. And then you hit enter, or you can mouse right mouse click. Um, I've already done that. It's right here. Uh, and then, so what that player character is, if you leave it at zero, is the character we are playing as. That's your main character. So we want to get that character. And then you want to type in this new one. If you right click again, cast two. And then you put your, your the name of your class in. So mine is the Gears of War template character. Yours could be third person template, whatever you named your project. And you're going to hit that one. Again, I've done that here. You're going to drag the blue line into the object line on the left side here. So I'll spread this out so you can see it a little bit better. So you're going to take this return value line and drag it into the object line here. 
It doesn't matter where these are placed. Um, I keep them pretty close so that it's neat. Sometimes it's neater to spread it out, depends on how much stuff you have. The reason we do this is because this player character is Unreal's base player character class. But we've made our own Gears of War template character class here, or whatever your class name is. And the purpose of that class is to override the functionality of the base character class and add more to it, or take away. But basically it's used to add more to it. So we're adding more, we're adding, we added the sprint, now we're adding uh, player health and player damage. So what you do is you drag from this as Gears of War template character, whatever your thing is, and type in the variable that you want to access from that specific character. And we want player health, get player health. And you'll get this, which again, I've already done. Lastly, you want to put this value into the return nodes value. And when you do that, that's the connection you made. That means the value of player health will now be shown on the progress bar that this is bound to. And if that makes sense, you'll be able to see uh, here. And let me make this a little bit easier even. We go to the output log. Whoops. We go to the output log. You'll see we are healing for 0.02 points. And now we have full health, so we gotta take damage away. Taking damage, taking damage, taking damage, heal. And you'll see that that value of 0.02 in there, that's from the percent %f that we implemented earlier. That's the printing the float to the log that I was talking about. And you'll see that if you look in the top left where the health bar actually is, you'll see that we are in fact mimicking the player health variable through that progress bar. So now we have working health and damage, and we haven't bound anything to the stamina slash mana bar, but it's literally the same process. You might have to change the functionality that it's binding to, but you could do the same process and it would work the same way. So that's how you get functioning progress bars. Um, that's probably about it for now. Honestly, that's all I want to show you. In the next episode, I want to go over collectible items, like I said. So, like, for example, this maybe, this icon. If you run into it, it will heal you. So instead of having to press a button, say you're at this health, if you run into this, we should go to full health. That'll be one thing I want to show you. The other thing I want to show you is maybe the floating uh, health bars over someone's head. So if we spawn maybe a, a test dummy next to us, we can see a health bar over his head so we know how much health that enemy or teammate has. Anyway, guys, that's it for now, but thanks for watching. I love that you guys are enjoying this series and all my programming series, and if you have questions or specific videos you want, I will be more than happy to work on them. Um, it might take me a while. It, it does take me a little bit to get to these, um, you know. So, but I do want to say, Seth, thank you, Seth. You've been watching all my videos, and you've been asking, you've been waiting patiently and asking me a lot, so thank you. I will be making the Mega Man style boss rush programming tutorial this weekend so i'm not exactly sure when it'll be up but it, it will be out soon i will be working on it that way it can be ready soon so thank you for waiting and i will put my um i don't want to say my best effort but i will i'll put forth the effort to get that out soon for you and to everyone else Thank you all for watching. I'm Sean the Bro. I'm leaving you with this expert bit of programming advice, and my cat is calling at the back of my chair right now. Uh, comment your code. That's <laughs> that's my advice. Uh, make sure you comment, which we talked about last episode, because if you're working with other people, it'll get messy really quick. Anyway, guys, for the last time, I'm Sean the Bro. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, guys.